705. Hi, Marzi. Hi. Good morning. How the hell are you? Great. Hey, Marnie. Good. Yep. Are you a, f- a fan of American rock duo, the Black Keys? You know I am. Well, oh, they're heading out yeah. on the International Players Tour. And you won't want to miss them when they take the stage at Target Center on Sunday, November 10th. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. More info at kfan.com. Let's make the keyword count. Yeah, they haven't been the same since Fergie left, but I'm still a fan. <laughs> Chris, who was the band? This is a Googleable oh, question. Google. But who was the band that, remember the Black Keys introduced somebody? into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and that band was like, who the hell are these guys? They were, like, mad about it. Do you remember that? Yeah. And this, um, this is... I mean, the Black Keys are a big deal and were a big deal at the time, but the band that was getting inducted by them was very bitter about Steve it. Steve Miller. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Steve Miller. That was it. Steve yeah. Miller was like, who the hell are the Black Keys yeah, and weird, why are right? they in, in, inducting me? This... I, th- I thought they got to pick, right? Uh, like, didn't Bon Jovi pick Howard Stern? I was going to say, that's a weird thing that they didn't have a say in who inducts them. Right. You know? right. Black Keys. Who? Yeah. Um. Hey, before I forget, Marcy. Yo. Uh, we got to do the news in a second, but I want to re- I remember this. Uh, Palm Royale. It's the new uh, Kristen Wiig show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Watched two episodes of it last night. And? Uh, she's going to get all kinds of uh, uh, praise and love for how great she is in this because it's not exactly a comedy, but it's not exactly not a comedy. She's like a... Uh, um, a woman who wants to be a part of this really rich set of people who go to this, um, uh, the Palm Royale is like a... Uh, country club. Yeah, like a country club in, in, in uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have the money to be there. It's it's a very hard plot to explain. That's basically the best way right, to say it. Okay? Right. But it's got all these people in it uh, that you'd recognize. Ricky Martin's really good in it. Believe it or not, what I just said is crazy to say, but he's really <laughs> good in it. I watched two episodes last night. Kristen Wiig is great in this. But there's a girl who plays her nails person, right? What do you call that? Nails person? Yeah, okay. nail technician. Okay, there you go. Um, mm-hmm. um, and and the whole time I'm going, who in the sweet hell is that girl? She's beautiful. I know that face. I have no idea who it is. And it bothered me the whole show, but I didn't want to look it up because I'm like, it's in there. I'm old. I'm I'm going to be better than this. I'm going to know who it is. Well, I just gave up, right? Mm-hmm. Just now, just gave up. Um, her name is Kaya Gerber. Oh, yeah, that's Cindy Crawford's oh, yeah. daughter. That's Cindy Crawford's yep. daughter. Now, I've never seen her before, but she looks so much like her mom that I was like, who is that? So you I didn't know, know that her. I was young. You just recognize the genetics. She <laughs> is stunning. Oh, Hawk, and if you this woman. you saw Bottoms last year, right? Oh, is she in that? She's the hot girl that the one girl was trying to date in the movie. Oh my gosh, she yeah. is. You're right. Okay, all right. That might be part of the problem too. But she looks so much like her mom. Hmm. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, what a stunning woman. So the Palm Royale uh, reviews are almost what you just said, that some of the performances are great, but that the show itself is not good. Right. Uh, and I guess oh, it gets dang. worse. Yeah. Oh, does yeah. it really? Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, the reviews are not good. It's getting hammered. I kept waiting for it because I, I even said to myself after the first episode, I'm not sure what's going on, mm-hmm. but Kristen Wiig is killing it. That sounds like you're on page with everybody else, that the show's not great, but individual performances are pretty solid. I got to tell you, man. She is really something. I mean, she, I love Kristen Wiig. She is. I mean, obviously, love she's her. very, very funny. And there are moments where, you're, like, she does something that's very Kristen Wiggish, you know, like, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But uh, most of the time, you're like, wow, I. She's crazy, and she's communicating with her face. You're like, this woman's in trouble. She's crazy. It's really good. Hosting SNL this weekend. Is she really? Yeah. Kristen oh, that would be great. I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Yeah, Laura Dern. Um, yeah, Carol, Carol Burnett. Burnett. Yeah, right. Oh, damn. Allison Janney, Mindy Cohn. Yeah. I haven't seen from Mini Facts Cone yet. of Life. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I have. That's right. That was Mini Cone. Yeah. God, I don't think I've seen her in anything in the last four oh, years. Oh my God! I, I just realized who she was. That's Mini Natalie Cone. from Facts yeah, no, of no, Life. No, no, I'm sorry, yeah. that, but I mean, which character she was? Hmm. Wow. So anyway, I I don't know, Marge. Give it a shot. I'll for sure give it a shot because I'll watch anything that Kristen Wiig is right, in. Right. But when we talked about this off air last week, I said it. It's hard for me. To like something she's in when she's not making me laugh. Yeah, right, right. Man. And I don't want to shortchange her and not give her credit, but like the the skeleton qu- twins, yep. skeleton twins. With twin. Bill Hader. I did not like that. Yeah. It was very serious and kind of heavy and kind of sad. And right, right. I didn't like it. There yeah. was a Molly Shannon did a movie where she played a mom dying of cancer, and I hated it. Her performance was wonderful. 
But I hated it because it made me so sad. Right. I wept because I was like watching Molly Shannon die. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Your worst nightmare. And she was not making me laugh. No. And that's what she's done her entire life. Was she going for laughs? (laughs) Turns out she was not. All right. All right. So Palm Royale, it is described as a drama. So it's, um, boy, yeah, Kristen Wiig, I wonder if she just, when you do so much comedy and when you are known for that and you come up in that, I wonder if as an actor, if you just crave different roles. Yeah, and, you know, I'm thinking now through her, um, what would you call her, the, the movie she's been in? Yeah. Where she doesn't have a lot of, I mean, the, the it's top heavy, obviously, Bridesmaids, one Bridesmaids, of the funniest yep. movies, uh, I mean, top 10 all time for me, I love it. But there's bit parts and things that, like in Anchorman too. That that's very kind of funny, you know. MacGruber, obviously, you know. She, oh man, right? Mm-hmm. But man, there's there's not a lot going on for her outside of that when it comes to uh, movies. Huh? Never really thought about it. Oh, she's yeah, no, she no. and she's been off the grid for a while. She had a couple uh, of yeah, babies. Purpose, and, yep. Uh-huh, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. So there you go. Anyway, that's my review. Would you guys like some neos? Sure. Oh, yeah. This is KFAN News with Chris Hockey, presented by the St. Paul Saints. Thank you, St. Paul Saints. Again, uh, uh, gone this week playing some games. with back this weekend, I believe, Thursday. Is that right, Zach? Is that what we said yesterday? My memory's not good. It's, I think, next week. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. See, that's why I told you my memory's not that good. But I do know this. Uh, St. Paul Saints doing some great things, including April 12th. Uh, fun is good. It's the fun is good era when fans have a chance to win two tickets to a Taylor Swift concert in Miami. April 12th. How about that? So uh, check them out. Hmm. uh, Saintsbaseball.com. Saintsbaseball.com. And some new food. That's a huge giveaway. That's a huge one. Yeah. How about this? May 17th, they're doing 40 candles for 40 years of John Hughes movies. A celebration of 80s movies with an appearance by Getty Watanabe. Long Duck Dong himself <laughs> will be there May 17th. What's happening? Uh, hot stuff. Donger needs food. Donger, no, Donger needs, needs sleep. food. Or is it sleep? Is it food? I can't remember. Been a long time. There you go. Thank you, St. Paul Saints. Here you go. <clears throat> well, just when you thought you had enough to worry about if you were a parent, now kids getting in trouble for AI nudes. Of their classmates. Parents were first told about the incident last week. The inappropriate photos may have been shared among students through text messages. The school has not said who created the photos or said how many students may have been victimized. Last month, the Beverly Hills Unified School District expelled five eighth graders accused of also using AI to generate and share nude photos of their classmates. I'm Daniel Martindale. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, this, uh, that was uh, in California. Um, eighth grade. Eighth grade. I know. So I know. if it's AI... Is it just uh, taking a classmate's face and sort of photoshopping Probably, yeah. it? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's just so. an advanced yeah. Photoshop? Yeah. 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 Ooh, I know. But, I mean, think about that. Yikes. We dealt with that with Taylor Swift a couple of months ago, right? right? It's right. It, The technology is so good now. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna, to, if it isn't already, it's going to be so hard to tell in the future whether or not it's an actual nude or not. Oh, or if it's just AI or whatever. It's going to be tough. And stuff like that's going to be super damaging to kids. Uh, that sucks. Terrible. I, and, you know, that I, I'm... I'm sure they're doing the teachers too, right? Like, I, I yeah. mean, you mean making photos? Things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. But you know what I mean? Like, I, they gotta be. I, yeah, man. So there you go. Now oh we God. got, there's something else to worry about. Would you guys even know where to start? I mean, I know how to use chat GPT, but That'd if I was like, it. I need a nude of uh, Maxo. <laughs> I mean, uh, Marty. I mean, Mar- why did I say Max? <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, where would I even start? said either one of them. Yeah, yeah. Please <laughs> put me on a rockin' bod. <laughs> <laughs> but where would I even, where would I start? I'd try it on chat PTT. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever are there, it's called. But are there right well-known now. AI spots to do this? Or how, there, there must be, because people make memes of, like, even NBA players, like Anthony Davis has a bad night and someone will make Make an AI photo of him as a trucker or something and say yeah, you should quit that the stuff NBA. is easy. Yeah, uh, like, but a but, lot okay, of the but more where, though. The, if that's easy, where are people uh, doing that? Bing AI, I think uh, they have an image generator. I think, uh, so I think ChatGPT has their own version of that too that that they're rolling out. So to make regular stuff like that, but they are very heavily uh, filtered. Uh, if you say anything now, celebrity wise, or if you. Say anything that even could be misconstrued as sexual, 
it won't make the image for you. Good. Uh, but but there's got to be like keep some... in mind this is open source stuff, yeah, right. right? And so there open are source. going to be uh, bad actors out there that take this and 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 do create those things. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, okay. Mm-hmm. How am I missing the the detail of like if you say your classmate's name, how does AI have? You probably have the, to throw some pictures in there. You have to probably, access like yeah. your uh, school directory or something to get a teacher's face or a student's face. Or their Facebook. Yeah, or their Facebook, Twitter, Twitter probably, Instagram. Yeah. It's probably well, super pictures easy. pictures of you anywhere online. They can find you. Yeah, they probably online. could yeah. just give put the Instagram link in there, and then the right. AI has a million pictures to base it off of. Yeah. So there you go. That sucks. Um, speaking of sucks, I'll give you another bad news story. Here you go. A jury is hearing evidence against the man accused of stabbing five people in the Apple River back in the summer of 2022. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that I know. One. Oh. Uh, one of these people, a 17-year-old, died. St. Croix County prosecutors yesterday said uh, Nicolet Mew, I believe, got into a fight with a group of young people, then started stabbing. They told the, uh, the, the jury that he was uh, the aggressor. His lawyers say the group of young people accused him of being a predator and said uh, they are the ones who made the situation into something dangerous. Uh, the trial is expected to last into next week. So there you go. Yeah, I'd mm-hmm. forgotten about that as well. Jeez Louise. I'm sure a lot of families didn't forget about it. Though. Correct. Mm. Uh, the Powerball jackpot is over a billion dollars, and oh, nobody won the go. grand prize in Monday Night's Drawing. But somebody did win That's right. Million, Six Marty. tickets. Lucky. One of them in Minnesota for uh, um, for a million dollars. So did you buy tickets, tickets. Marnes? Nope. No, nope, okay. I didn't. Because that's, that's, that's what you've always wanted is yeah, the, the smaller million. prize. You want the million. Yeah, it's... The danger of winning the bigger prize is what's keeping me from buying okay. the I understand. I understand. Uh, the next drawing takes place Wednesday, tomorrow. Uh, cash option would be five twenty seven, five hundred twenty seven million million. Perfect. Marnes, again, here's why you need to play. Yeah, I want all that, and I want that burden. Yeah, please. So you win the five twenty seven yeah. or whatever you just said after mm-hmm. the cash option. And then since it's your money, take as many millions as you want. If yeah. you want three or four million and that's it. Yeah. Give that's me the five other now. five million. Yeah, fine. Then give me the other five hundred and twenty-two million. I'm super happy. Okay. you're super happy. Everybody, Everybody wins. wins. Yeah, and yeah. if and then like down the road, if like six months from now, if you're like, can I get a hundred thousand? I need to, to buy a pool, and I'd be like, uh, <laughs> maybe. But you don't want a burden, mm-hmm. Right. You know, I don't, we don't yeah. want to put well, a burden. I would, thanks for considering. Yeah, right. I, that's what I'm saying. I would consider giving you some of it back, but to Chris's point, I would be the gatekeeper because I wouldn't want to enable you to just what, spend no? like crazy. Gatekeeper. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was going to say. I would protect you from yourself, you money. So you give yeah. me the 520, you take the five, we call it a day. How generous. Yeah. Uh, speaking of generous, you know who's generous is uh, Willie Nelson with his weed. Hell yeah. Uh, my last news story is going to be a little kicker. That's what we do in the news business. A kicker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Inside uh, term. That's right. Snoop Dogg with Tom Brady. What's the highest you've ever been? Snoop, what was the most stoned you've ever been in your whole life? With Willie Nelson. <laughs> we was in Amsterdam on 420. So we went back to his hotel room and we was playing dominoes. So Willie had a vape, a joint. I had a blunt and he had a pipe. And I'm just getting higher and higher and higher. And he just keep passing it to me. And I'm like trying to stop. <laughs> but I can't because I don't want to show no signs of weakness. <laughs> Fifteen minutes into the session, I said, I say, Willie, <laughs> hey, man, let's get something to eat, man. And we go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? And when they bring the chicken from the drive through they give it to us. And me and Willie both put our hands in the bucket at the same time. <laughs> and we grab the same piece of chicken, Tom. And I look at Willie and I say, it's yours, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> man. What a moment. Oh that sounds God. like the start of a joke, right? So Willie oh, yeah. Nelson and Snoop Dogg right. are in right. Amsterdam yeah. at 420. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost too on the nose. It's, it's it too uh, on brand. And that's exactly where Sauce is right now. Right he's in Amsterdam. Now, as we speak. What if he's in the same hotel room that Snoop and Willie Nelson were in? I bet he's not. And him and Keller are just higher than hell <laughs> eating KFC. <laughs> It's it's got to be like playing basketball against Michael Jordan trying to s- smoke with Snoop and Willie Nelson, oh, right? Yeah, like right. you have no chance no at chance. all. Yeah, I do love that. It's the first time I've ever heard that Snoop said he couldn't keep up with somebody. <laughs> right. no, how about yeah. Willie Nelson Willie is the Nelson. only person that can outsmoke Snoop Dogg. I love it. Woody Nelson, uh, Willie Nelson's in his nineties, isn't he? Or something like that. He's super. Oh, and he was smoking like the weed now is way stronger than it was back then. So. Man. He's he built pr- up the tolerance. Yeah, what a true athlete. He, he might be dead. And he doesn't, he doesn't feel know pain. It. Right. He doesn't <laughs> right. even know it. Uh, sports is next. Marty Gelder can walk us through the Wolves' loss from a couple nights ago and look uh, forward to tonight. But, Marty, they're in. They've clinched a spot. The they're Wolves in. in the playoffs. How about that?
Uh, more of the Power Trip Morning Show after this on the fan. Get ready to laugh. When All right. <laughs> Comedian Anthony Jeselnik comes to the State Theater on Saturday, April 20th. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Anthony Jeselnik. That okay, dude good. is absolutely He's very, very good. I've always hilarious. wanted to say his name. I wasn't sure. I love that dude. Here Was that the funny part? Tickets for both the early <laughs> and the late shows are on sale now. More info and get your tickets today. Head over for more info and get your tickets today. KFA.com, make keyword calendar. That's the 20th? I should go to that show. Tickets are still available. Is that what you just said? That's 20? what they say. How is that not sold out? That dude's a beast. He's very funny. He's super funny. What's your favorite Anthony Jessel Nick joke? Most of them you can't say on the... Uh, not even close. Not even close. Close. <laughs> he does this bit about Willie Nelson and Snoop Dogg getting high. It's pretty good. Man, I might have to try to go to that show. Baby? <laughs> Is that just a question? Who are you talking to? <laughs> In that joke, wasn't it his sister's or something, if I remember right? Wasn't it his sister's baby? There's a lot of different babies. How many different baby jokes are there? People hit the ceiling before the baby even hits, it hits the, the floor. floor. Yep. That's like the um, the prank that uh, was the former Minnesota congressman who was on Saturday Night Live. Al Franken. Al Franken pulled that, that bit. Do you guys remember that bit? No. One of his uh, castmates on Saturday Night Live had a new baby. They were having like a, a a party to show the baby to everybody. And so he did a deal with the father of the baby where he was going to be the one to carry the baby in, but it wasn't really the baby. He had a baby doll and he tripped and fell <laughs> oh my God. in front of all these women. Oh my God. He thought it was funny. No one else did? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. Oof, yep. da. Yep. That's quite the bit. It's time for Fan 5 on the Power Trip, presented by All Around Property Preservation. Hey, thanks, All Around Property Preservation. Thank you, All Around. Marns, let's start with you since okay. you're sitting here. All right. right why not? Uh, the Wolves host Houston tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, the Wolves are one game behind OKC for the top spot in the West. Uh, they did uh, clinch a playoff spot, the Minnesota Timberwolves. And if they win tonight, they have officially the second best record in franchise history. Right, right now, they're tied for the second best with 51 wins. Tonight would be 52. The all-time record for the Wolves is 58. Uh, weird game, though, on Sunday, right? After Friday night's just epic yeah. performance mm-hmm. against Denver, that was huge. Uh, Caruso and the Bulls just yeah. shot really, really well. And what, Walker, Alexander Walker, Ant, and McDaniels were just off on Sunday. A lot of missed threes out of those three. So kind of a weird loss at home to the Bulls. It was a weird loss, and it was disappointing because it was coming off of such a high in Denver, no pun intended. But (laughs) it wasn't like the Wolves just folded and played a terrible game and didn't take them seriously. Actually, the Wolves played fine. They played decently. Um, Chicago making 17 threes was crazy. Alex Caruso making seven of his eight threes. That was a career high. It took a career night for the Bulls to beat the Wolves. And it was a one-point game in the final stretch. And then the, they closed it out, obviously. But my point is, if you are a Wolves fan, you don't have to hang your head and be disappointed. And woe in me. And this, woe is me. This is so Minnesotan to do. No, it wasn't that at all. It was a red-hot shooting team that came in. And it sucked that we couldn't defend them better. And it sucked that we didn't win that game. But um, it was not us crapping the bed. Mm. Yeah, so we just, can feel better about that. It was an insane shooting night by Chicago, just insane. in general. They're like, what, almost 60% from the floor? It was yeah, it was crazy. That's, that's a game that more than any other over this, what, 12, 13-game stretch that you miss Carl Anthony Towns. When the defense isn't going to work and it's just a shootout, that's a game you miss Carl Anthony Towns. For sure. For sure. However, we are still in the mix for first mm-hmm. in the West. Which also is a really interesting sort of uh, debatable point. Obviously, first is best, and you would always like to get first. But the difference between first, second, and third is I'm not sure. I mean, I I understand you don't get home court advantage for as long. But this particular season of playoffs, I think, is so much about the matchup. And you have no idea who your matchup is going to be. So it's not like we're not trying to get first. 
it's a fun thing to watch and and fun to watch the standings and hope that we get there. But all is not lost if we are the third seed. It's pretty much going to be one, two, or three. Any of those, I think, is very, very good, and we still have a chance. And then it's about matchups and which teams do you match up better with. It's kind of a wild situation that wouldn't be the norm in a regular season. I'll still, I'll still go back to what I said last week, though, Marnes. If, if the Wolves, regardless of who they run into in round one, if they lose, it's an epic failure. So I know yeah. that they are going to match up slightly better against some teams than others, and if you could pick, hey, I'd rather play that team than this team, and I don't want to see Dallas. I'd rather have the Lakers or the Warriors. For sure. I totally For get sure. it. I'm not saying matchups don't matter. The reason why I think it's so important to get home court advantage is I think the matchups are Denver and OKC, right? You're going to have to beat them, and I want home court. So I think it's massive to get number one because th- to me that even though we w- we won on both of their home courts yeah I'm not season. saying I think they can beat Denver or OKC in a seven game series um even if they don't have home court so I don't think it's like paramount I don't think you have to have it huge advantage okay. if you have so it so you're looking ahead you're looking ahead looking to ahead. Western Conference Finals thinking that's where we belong or at least semis right at least when you, if you run into OKC okay. in round two like right it's got it that to me, that is the basement. If you lose to Sacramento or Dallas or Golden State or the Lakers, whoever, if you lose to that team in round one, yeah, that's a epic huge failure and yeah. a massive disappointment. And I don't want to hear the uh, well, you don't have Carl Anthony Towns, so that's why we didn't win. Ant is a top five to ten player in the league right now. This team is good enough to beat all of those teams I just mentioned um, in the West, except for OKC and Denver. Right? If you lose to those two teams without Carl. I would understand. You lose to the rest of the teams without Carl, you, you got to put your big boy pants on and do it. I think they're good enough to do it. So matchups matter. I'm not saying they don't, but I, I'm looking round two and beyond. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, me and Martin's pretty much said the same exact thing. It's like, it, if the Mavericks are the eighth seed, I don't want to be the first seed. I don't want to play the Dallas Mavericks in the first round. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain teams that I just would rather ha- not have the Wolves play. So it really... It's and you're, and you're not going to know them until I would imagine the very last game of the yeah. regular season because the Western Conference is so volatile right See, now. You know that's interesting because Dallas would be a team I would pick and really? say, "Yep, yeah, we match up really well against Dallas." I know they're playing really well. That's the they thing, are yeah. on a heater right now. But New Orleans, I don't like. I don't and want, Sacramento, I don't, want, I don't like only I don't because want, they like have either. a matchup that we seem to struggle with, and I, they can kind of take. Rudy. Who would you want then? Who's who's like who would you target? Well, I would Phoenix, take, uh, Dallas, Golden State. I'd, yeah, yeah, probably I'd to, Phoenix. I'd love to play Phoenix because what are the chances that their big three are even going to be all on the court at the same time? And they haven't. I mean, even when they are he- healthy, they haven't been very great this season. The Kings, I I was on your bandwagon with the Kings because they played the. I mean, they've ran the Wolves off the floor at, a, at least once this season, but they don't have Malik Monk, who has been the big killer of the Wolves throughout all season. He's hurt. He's out for the rest of the season. Yeah, so it's that's Demontis a, Sabonis that that makes me nervous. Yeah, yeah, only because he he occupies Rudy. He, yeah. Takes Rudy's attention defensively, and it sort of pulls him away from everything else that he can. And he is not scared of Rudy. He it. goes right at Rudy every time. Right, right. It's just not a great matchup. But mm. in a seven-game series, can we beat New Orleans? Can we beat the Kings? Yes, can of course. So it's not like I'm not. <laughs> if you're asking me to pick and choose, I'll give you my rankings. But um, I can hear your argument too, Corey. There's there is legitimacy in saying we're thinking second round and hopefully Western Conference Finals. And yes, we would like home court advantage because yes, Target Center has been awesome yep. for that. So I'm on board with that. Let's go get the one. Uh, wild news presented by our friends at Catalyst Supply and CatalystSupplyCo.com. The uh, mm-hmm. Wild are hosting Ottawa tonight. Zach, eight points now behind the Los Angeles Kings, but uh, St. Louis won last night 3-2 to two over the Oilers in overtime. So even though the Kings lost 4-3 to the Jets, the Wilds still eight points behind the Kings and are now five points behind St. Louis. So St. Louis only three points out of that final wild card spot. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. We talked about it last hour. They could be the Blues, but they couldn't beat them, and uh, they couldn't uh, show up to those uh, those big games, injuries and issues. Well, Hartman got suspended for three games, so that doesn't uh, help things. And so, yeah, uh, tough times, but we'll still be there. Should be a fun game. The Senators aren't that great. Should get in a couple of big points tonight. I'll re-elect them. And uh, I'm filling in for Fomus <laughs> again. So uh, join cool. us on the pregame. 6.45 on the Minnesota Wild Radio Network. Hey. Right. Look at you. Zach Wolf. 
And uh, Twins News twins? brought to you by our friends at Quantum Fiber. Thanks, Quantum Fiber. The Twins were off yesterday. They are at Milwaukee today at 310. Louis Varland on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. Something called Jacob Junis, maybe? I don't know. J-U-N-I-S? All right. Yeah, that's like nice. J-A-K-O-B? Jakob, maybe? We're going with Jakob or Jacob? Jakob Yunus. Jakob Yunus. Anyway, so the uh, the drunken Scotties are 3-0. and The Twins are 2-1. and one. Mark Look Rosen joins in Look a second. Him. He's ready for Vegas. Look at him. He's, He's ready. He's not going to come see us. He's just not going to come hang out with us. Anymore. He's too big for the Power Trip Morning Show. Everybody is. Uh, the Power Trip Morning Show with Marty Gellner and Mark Rosen. And a little bit of snow, it looks like, out there. Returns after this on The Fan. The Fan. Seven for you. My main man, Paul Detelm, and the boys. We come back from break. And hey, by the way, yesterday was April Fool's Day, and Wheel of Fortune pulled a fast one on you. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the stars of our show, Jared Leto and Vanna White. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, had a great show. All right, everybody, grab those devices. It's time to give away some money. Uh, $1,000 in our first toss-up. The category is on the map. So, and then what happened is Jared Leto, for the next 30 minutes, berated the contestants for not getting the answers quickly enough. You'll never forgive him for that. Uh, One mistake he made. (laughs) One mistake. You just happened to be there for it. He yelled at me. He did. Jared Leto. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, then that was a, they, they, and then he just disappeared, Rosie, and they never saw him again. Really? They never mentioned it, yep. But Jared wow. Leto, uh, they pulled a fast one on us. Just to the open. Fools. Yep. All right. That's good. Good That's idea. pretty funny. Yeah. It's a good bit. When does uh, Wheel of Fortune end for the season? When is Pat Sajak's I, last uh I have no idea. It, it, you never know. It doesn't seem to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It yeah. just goes and goes and goes. And uh, I have no idea. I but guess we're going to start to hear, go. though, right? If it's May or June or oh, yeah, whatever, we'll start to hear the ramp and up it, that such and such and state is past. Is last. Ryan Seacrest taking over? Seacrest. It's yeah. good to know he's got work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, poor guy. I've yeah. never. I don't know what's happened to him. He just dropped you didn't off see the face him on of the, the iHeartRadio Music Awards no. last night on Fox. No, I was watching women's basketball. Oh, yeah, you, you were. Missed, I oh, sure was. Oh, my wife was going crazy. Oh my God, with Iowa. Was she watching the game? <laughs> <laughs> just, no, just another normal night for yep. Car. Why is yeah. she anti women sports, or why was she no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> graduate of Iowa? Is that why you married her? Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh yeah, so that's right. She's, she's uh, oh, she's a hot guy. She's dropping f bombs and she's going crazy. Karen, she's, Karen, she's yelling like at that, one that, of the yeah. players not to shoot threes, and she's like, going, "Oh my God, I've never seen the side of you." Now we got to, you know. That turned you on, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Money it did. In the game? It did. <laughs> no money in the game. No, but well, then why, I. Who, do, who cares then? You well, can't get I, that I, mad. Well, I may, we may. Well, she doesn't bet. She's not allowed to because she's, you know. Yeah. Of course she can. She's you, the boss. You, she, can, she can't bet on anything. Well, she can bet me. Out- can I mean, she bet outside what? of the he NFL? Said he said bet. No. Bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. I, you can't I, put a little money on the Masters? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I would I, hope so. I, I think she probably technically could, but. She's the boss when it comes to regulating. That's ask right. Chris Hockey. That's right. Oh, when yeah. it comes to Whatever regulating she tells me uh, to do, I do gambling, her. she just goes uh, through your bookie, right, Rose? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'll take Paige, and you can have Caitlin, and we'll see what happens. Um, well, Friday that is going to happen. And on then Friday. you guys watch the game. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. So it was a. Gr- it was, I'm looking at Marnie. It doesn't. I don't have to look at Marnie. I'm, I'm just saying that it was a great showcase last night for was, uh, that in, was individual a great game. and. Yep. I'm anxious to see what the ratings were last night because uh, it was two really good games. The uh, UConn uh, uh, USC game was also mm-hmm. equally as as entertaining, and uh, Paige Beckers is saving her best for last. And we we're all proud of her, of course, being one of us. But um, my goodness, uh, she she's brought her game to another yeah, level. She is so good. Uh, there was so much hype for these games, and especially yeah. because. The ESPN types love to make it individual and love to make it Caitlin Clark against Angel Reese. But there right. is drama to that. There is a buildup to that. But rarely does a game live up to the hype. And the second half wasn't as dramatic until the, until LSU closed the gap right. again. But holy cow, the that, entertainment value of especially the first half first and half up and was, down and the pace unreal. and the shot making. It was outstanding. Yeah, it was uh 
perfection, really. It was, and it was a tie game at halftime, and it was it was that good. It was 45-45 or something like that, I think it was. So, um, yeah, they, they deserve all the accolades they're getting right now and putting themselves on the map and, and seeing where this is going to go. Obviously, Caitlin's going pro, going to the WNBA. Mm-hmm. Yep. Angel Reese hasn't decided yet, although I'm still trying to figure out why she's Projected as the seventh, and that's where the Lynx pick seventh overall, right? Hey, and, here we go. And I'm thinking, how does she figure in? You know, I don't know all the women who are you know, uh, putting their names in the hat to go pro, but I'm surprised she'd be that low. You know what I mean? Uh, you think she'd be a third, fourth, pick. yeah, hmm. something like that. Well. I don't know, but I hope the Lynx end up with her. That'd be great. Hmm. My God, it's snowing out. <laughs> I yeah. just I just drove in here and it's like increased. Would you give up sixteen first round picks for Caitlin uh, Clark? <laughs> <laughs> Would you give up? 17 I think I think Cheryl round Reeve picks? might. <laughs> She's going to sell enough tickets. If the Lynx got Caitlin Clark, they wouldn't have to ever worry about uh, filling Target Center again because every Iowa fan would be here uh, for pretty much every home game. Yeah, they would. Mm. Uh, they would. They would. I'm not saying sell it out, but they would. They would. Uh, their attendance would definitely <laughs> double. I thought I heard during the broadcast that Angel Reese was going to decide yes. after the game, That's after what her heard. final game, which yeah. would have been last night, and that she was going to tell her coach first, right, and then the media. But I did not watch her post game press conference, and I didn't hear anything. I, so I'm guessing she didn't announce it. I don't it think she announced. It. I don't last think night. she announced it. Her okay. post game press conference was very emotional. It was. Yeah, yeah. So it was. she had a Kleenex. I didn't hear her speaking, yeah. but she, I can imagine. I mean, there. That's the the beauty and the heartbreak of tournament time is is every game means so much and every game could be your last. Right. And you well, don't, don't know, know until the, the championship would, that it definitely would be. I don't know what her NIL situation is, but there's really otherwise there's no value in going back. I mean, I think I think, I think the NIL situation is pretty good because I've I've I heard her in the so. past allude to I'm not in any rush to go to the WNBA. She's doing a lot of other stuff outside of. Uh, basketball as well like caitlin's doing i mean caitlin's doing a ton of obviously like construction stuff construction stuff yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. landscaping jobs <laughs> right. good gig. Uh, it did suck that last night was not the final four because every team had a star right you had caitlin clark angel reese juju watkins right. page beckers right uh i know south carolina is undefeated but name a player on south carolina uh, Terry Reese. So Terry. Out, outside Don, of Terry Reese, Don Angel Staley. Reese's twin sister, <laughs> Terry, who's on South But nobody can name anybody on South right. Carolina no, or man. NC State. All the stars were last night. So I know NC or uh, uh, South Carolina is the massive favorite. And they're they're undefeated. They'll probably win the whole They've thing. Been, the stars were all been last struggling night. struggling a little bit. So they, I think I think either one of, uh, I mean, I think Iowa or UConn. UConn has come out of nowhere, which is really weird for a Gino Ariema team because they got a slew of injuries early in the year, mm-hmm. and they were not even thought to be able to make it to the you know, Sweet 16. And then all of a sudden, they've gotten a little healthier and obviously um, a lot better. So I think Paige Beckers is a huge part of it. Well, Coming off of is, her second knee surgery, it has just taken her this long to find this gear. kind of a rhythm. She is an unbelievable basketball player. She's gotten player. stronger physically and, and just she's yeah, she's terrific. I think they said she's averaging like six, maybe eight more points just in the tournament compared yeah. to the regular season. So she's yeah, stepped rely up. On her. She That'd be a good matchup. scored or assisted on I, half of their points yesterday. Oh, how about that? <laughs> well, should the Lynx uh, plummet for Page? Plummet hats. <laughs> should they... See, the WNBA what, what has a, a, a two-year... We talked about this that two you, year. Oh, you add your last two years together... Uh, to get your draft position, oh, how so the links do this year? They did. They exceeded expectations this past oh, damn season. Damn it! Bomb for Beckers. and the actually made the playoffs. <laughs> I like it. So, yeah, yeah. I just don't Imagine. think Cheryl Reeve is capable of well, of doing of tanking, and that's a wonderful thing no, to have. That's she's a not. wonderful personality trait. If you yeah. combine the two years, and that means we're going to have to lose way more this year than we were planning on. Like, let's lose them all then. Right, every single Corey. one. Then we can get Paige Beckers. Why is he like that? <laughs> I don't. I don't Do you want to win like titles or not? Get yeah. Cheryl in Why here. Why is tell everybody that. in this town just okay with being <laughs> okay? <laughs> We're okay so like. just being mediocre. You miss him, don't you? I really. <laughs> He's in Amsterdam? That's right. Yep. I mean, sure why wouldn't he be? Hell. Yep. Wow. Just token. Yep. Yep, yeah. Just token it up. Token it away. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, uh, every photo that Cal has posted so far on Instagram is, is you know, like a. Uh, Shots of the city and mm-hmm. they're yeah, and all beautiful. I'm think, right. And all I'm thinking is, Sauce is so unhappy walking right now. 
Because my guess is he's just walking around the That's city. That's all you can do around Dude, there. Yeah. Or get a you, bike. He, he must be hating we that part are of so, this. I, I could not agree. I, when I see every picture of him, I'm thinking to myself right now, he's behind those complaining. eyes, he's thinking, I wish I was going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those pictures. Or, I think he's so tired. Right. right the photos yes. of him like sitting at a table holding right. a beer. That's, that is what he likes. The rest right. of it is just like, how much further do we have to walk? Yeah, exactly. Taking in the culture and no. the beauty. Not no, interested. No, 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 no. You know what he's doing? He's hard pass. He's thinking about what he should be doing on MLB The Show right now. Exactly. Right. How's the squad yeah. doing? <laughs> it's time for Vikings News on the Power Trip. Presented by... Right, right. Rosie, I have a, a, a hypothetical question oh, to ask you. Oh, 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 okay. The answer is no. So a lot of people are saying, why would you give up the house to trade up to get the third or fourth best quarterback right. in the draft? Right. One of the comebacks I've heard, I'm not saying I agree or disagree, I just want to hear your thoughts on sure. this, is... Do you believe if, let's just say Drake May, if Drake May was in next year's draft, is there a chance he would be the number one overall pick? Of course. Would J.J. McCarthy potentially be the number one or number two overall pick next year if they had gone back to school? I would say any of those guys would be. So that's that's the comeback I've heard from people that say those two are worth giving up the house to get up to three or four this year because they might be worthy of the number one pick Next year, so you, you're you're telling yourself, I know we're giving up a lot for the third or right. quote, third or fourth right. best quarterback, but in next year's draft, that's how good they would be. So you have to believe they are worthy of the number one or two pick mm-hmm. if you're going to give up that much to get even get up to three or four. Yes or no? You know, I think it's it's a it's the toughest decision the Vikings have to make. But I, I, the independent people I've heard in the NFL who I actually trust their opinions, um, have said that when people say, well, which one do you like of, of all of all the ones you just mentioned? And then throw in, obviously, Caleb Williams is not going to be around and blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, Trevor one ends up with Kevin O'Connell. They really do believe that O'Connell can develop any of those other guys into a top-flight NFL quarterback. So it, I've gone both ways in this thing, thinking um, would, would the Vikings be better off at, at 11, you know, uh, taking uh, the best defensive player who can be, you know, what, what the Detroit Lions have done, uh, getting someone of that ilk, you know, the Aiden Hutchinson type of player who can turn a defense around and at 23 potentially take, you know, a Penix or, if he's there or someone else as another quarterback and, and don't put all your chips in there and keep those both those draft picks. Having said that, I think there's very little chance that's going to happen. I think the Vikings are going to move up and get one of the top four. And um, I think that's the direction they're going. Who that person's going to be, I, I have, you know, no one knows right now. Because, And that's yeah. the problem. Unless you make that deal before draft night uh, with New England or with uh, Arizona, Arizona um, you're not going to have much. You know, you're not going to. It's going to be a lot of, uh, as you'd like to say, a lot of poker playing that night. A lot of. Well, do they need my assistance? They might. I mean, maybe no. Quasi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be the most expensive and risky game of poker the Vikings have ever played. you got to really, I mean, I'm sure they've worked out every possible scenario on how other teams are going to try to move up and, and how these teams are going to be working the phones like you're watching is another a sequel to draft day when, you know, they're on the phones and say, well, uh, Minnesota's giving me this. What do you got for me? What do you, you know, and it's going to be one of those nights. There's a lot of teams that want to move up. Yeah, and there's not a lot lot of time to get it done. Denver, Vegas, uh, us. Right. Maybe more. So, um, yeah, I just think, I think everyone will be pretty disappointed if the Vikings don't move up and get one of those players because I think there's always time to, and and they've done a nice job. I think a better job than anyone I anticipated defensively kind of with reinforcements that they've signed, the Quasi has signed for free agents, giving Brian (laughs) Flores what he wants. More importantly, already, which to me was a signal that more than ever that they're going to go uh, uh, put all their chips in the middle and say, We're, we want to get one of those top four guys. A lot of poker uh, references there. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, like that's that. that's the language you speak. That is the only language I speak. So that's your love language. Aww. My love language is naps and chicken. That's second. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I should, you know, you know what I should have dated? Chicken. I like spending money or gambling money, and I like chicken. You know who I really should have dated is uh, Glenn Taylor. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Unlimited funds, and he loves roasting chickens alive. Yeah, he was, uh, <laughs> you know, 
He my, was uh, he was he was like I think I think Swift said it was like the Godfather. Everybody was going over to Glenn the other night at, during uh, Marnie. I don't know if you saw that we you were staring me down yesterday the other night, but <laughs> I'm oh, trying to get yeah. your attention. I know I missed hey. you. I was she was right in front of me. and I was paying. I was looking at my phone. Shocking. Um, Nudes? No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, but Glenn was, gee, I mean, he was hugging it out with, you know, well, Jimmy P was talking to him for quite a while. Yeah, well, there's and, a lot to talk about. And Yeah, and uh, Chris Finch hugged it out with him and a few other people, and uh, it was kind of like... A-Rod and Mark Lurie, uh give him a they, nice handshake or They're hug. not going to be at home games, I don't believe. Well, uh, Glenn last week said they are still welcome to be now, minority owners, and they're going to move forward as I is. I had a little birdie tell me they're going to go in some road games, but uh, we'll find out. I don't. We'll find out if they'll be we there tonight. tonight. tonight and tomorrow night. Yeah, tonight, we'll find Who out if they're tomorrow? there. What's that? You said we got, we tonight. got tonight. Uh, tonight. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. exactly. We need tonight and tomorrow, just to be clear. Yeah. Hell of a matchup tonight. Uh, uh, hell of a matchup. Star Tribune. StarTribune.com. Jim yeah. Suhan has an article that I haven't read because I think it's behind a paywall. Oh, but, oh I got a website uh, for I have you, a bro. But the, uh, the headline is enough. It just, in Wolves' sale fight, who should fans be rooting for? Yeah. Ooh, good question. We talked about this it. with Marnie at uh, TI on Friday morning. I truly see this as succession, where... Uh, there's it's, no winner. There's no good person to cheer for. It's just which villain do you want to win? Oh. I think because I think A Rod and Mark Lori are not really ready to be owners. If they can't come up with enough money and they have three years to do it, they screwed up a lot in this thing too. But Glenn's the worst, right? Either way, we're screwed. Well, I but I don't. You think most people just want to change the scenery? No, I do. Um, my one tweet was that. Glenn Taylor is not going to, in the court of public opinion, if you're a longtime Wolves fan and remember the debacle. <laughs> That's the sound of roasting chicken. The, the, the debacle that was Joe Smith. Uh, <laughs> David Kahn. <laughs> David Kahn. Um, Rambus. Kevin Garnett. Oh, Ness, Rambus. Uh, just, he's he not is, a good owner. He might be a great dude. I don't know him personally. He might lot. be very nice. Well, I, I don't know. I enjoy, I've always enjoyed my conversation. Yeah, maybe he's a nice client. guy. That's it doesn't fine. matter, but he's a businessman. He yep. said it's business. Don't don't ask the chickens. No, <laughs> it's really hard to concentrate. I know. Well, he's burning chickens. <laughs> no. Honestly, where's Glue but, Girl? We need Glue Girl at Target Center tonight. Yeah, or I think girl. Uh, whether, whatever you think of A Rod, I mean, people said come back and be going. Well, A Rod cheated at baseball. Well, oh, I, good. I, I, I of, of course he did. Doesn't he admitted that? What does that have to do with? Uh, I mean, that doesn't mean we know what kind of a ego. A Rod is has. I mean, it's just that's who he is. That's his personality. Mar- my, he's not going to change. But, he is. You're but, right. But doesn't mean he's not going to be a you know good owner, and that the players wouldn't respond to him, and that people wouldn't. Finally, you said. The so fans who are you cheering are, for? You want Glenn or do you want the new regime? I want the new regime. You want the new regime, Zacho? New regime or Glenn? I want to. I want to change. I think it's just. I, I wish Glenn all the best. I just think it's time. And well, I know he on. wants, especially this year. He doesn't want this. To, he wants. He's been waiting forty years for this. You took the words right out of my mouth, Mark. <laughs> Which Marty. Part of it? Marty, this is not an awkward spot for you at all. Do you want Glenn Taylor or the new regime? I want to win. win. Oh, good one. Now, win Chris. Now. I'm uncomfortable with the word regime. Oh, okay. <laughs> Max, Lori, and A Rod, or uh, Glenn Taylor? I think they should do a Royal Rumble. Just you know, fist fight it out. Whoever wins, whoever's the strongest, gets to keep the team. So you want Laurie and Narod? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just want a fair fight. Can we have Mark Cuban by the Wolves? Come on now. Uh, let, let me no. offer this, and this ship may have Are sailed. Are you looking to buy the uh, team? Is that what you're I saying? am. I got five on him, Arns. <laughs> let me offer this. This has been a wonderful season, and it has been with Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez sort of spearheading some bold decisions and bringing in Tim Connolly and bringing in Rudy Gobert. I mean, those moves happened before last season, but I'm saying the results we're seeing this season. And Glenn Taylor was still the owner and had the money and the deep pockets to be able to do these things. So I'm wondering if we don't have the perfect combination right now before the, the, uh, the fighting started and I don't know if it's possible, but, I mean, mm-hmm. this is working pretty well right now on the court. So Great three point. Way. You would like so, a three-way. so <laughs> And you'd like oh, yeah, them, I right. assume, to sit next to each other and hold hands the I entire care. game. I, I mean, that would be ideal. A-Rod should be the lucky Pierre. Lucky Except Pierre? Yeah, that, I tried that one time. Uh, yeah, that's on Urban Dictionary. These guys are having yeah. their own discussion. Yeah. Uh, it's... 
the power of, of, you know, this is why people go, you know what, it's billionaires fighting with... Yeah, well, it may not, never work. Yeah, I'm not saying it'll work. They want full control. They want more. They want the majority ownership yes, of, I this, understand. of this basketball team. And they don't want to be, you know, the, the ones who have to go, you know, like, Mr. Taylor, can I please sign, you know, so-and-so? Yeah, can you put down the chickens? <laughs> God, it's just... Yeah, how about... Can you give me a wing? How about when A-Rod and Mark Lowry eventually build a new arena, which is definitely around the corner, right? They want to. We will we'll have Glenn's Chicken Shack be on the main concourse. <laughs> concourse. We'll give him like the prime real estate. Like right when right. you walk in, you have to go past it, so you smell the roasted oh. chickens. It'll smell amazing. We'll give him ten uh, percent equity in that Glenn's Chicken Shack, just free of charge. Just move on with your life. That's very sweet. We'll give you some chicken money. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Chickens are roasting. You're making money. The wolves are winning. New ownership. New arena. A couple of championships. We'll call it a day. What do you think? Martin, does that work for you? That uh, makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm with you. It does. Very uncomfortable. How dare you? <laughs> I just want to win. Yes. This is really April fun. 20. This has been an awesome season. I want this again. I want to stay here. How about this? I'll, How about I'll we want close to get you this, this idea? June. How yes. about we tell LeBron James, forget Vegas, just own the Timberwolves? Yeah, Tom yeah. Brady's buying everything. Yeah. Right. Sure. Have LeBron buy the Wolves, but then keep them here in Minnesota. Or move them to Vegas. I don't care. I'll move to Vegas with <laughs> no, you. Too. No, no, no. No. Would you rather have LeBron be an owner than Glenn Taylor? Yeah. What about Oprah? Yeah, what about Oprah and yeah, LeBron together? Money. Oprah? Budmo. <laughs> what about uh, what about like Rihanna? She's a billionaire. What about Jay Z and Beyonce? Well, is yeah. Taylor yeah. Swift looking to invest? Yeah, T yeah. Swift and yeah. Kelsey could own the Timberwolves. Right. Hey Hawk, I think you have a tab open. <laughs> it's coming from. <laughs> it does sound a little. It does sound a little morning. Yeah, morning. Yeah. yeah. There we go. This is cause for concern. I love it. Voodoo birth. Local music on the Power Trip. I love it. All right, 8 o'clock out of the Power Trip Morning Show with Marty and Mark after this on The Fan. The Fan.